Good evening, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Unscripted and Unchained RPG Review. I am Castlekeeper Bloodworth, and as you can see by the graphics, uh, today's video was, was really one as, as much a surprise to me as to anyone else. Um, wasn't planning on this. Happened to be wearing the shirt already, uh, which you'll know from my previous video this morning. And, um, and I got a preview copy uh, as, as a Kickstarter backer. I got a preview copy of Castles and Crusades War Mounts. So I want to talk a little bit about this. I am not going to actually show you the, um, the full scope of the preview copy um, for obvious reasons, but uh, to be more specifically, um, it's, it's just I don't want anybody to be able to take screenshots of everything that I show and then, you know, basically steal the, uh, the product. So I, I will mention you know, a good number of the creatures that are in here. I'm going to show you one so that you can see how uh, the listings appear. Uh, and that's pretty much it. So uh, without further ado, let's talk about Castles and Crusades War Mounts. Uh, this is part of a three, a three book uh, Kickstarter. <coughs> Excuse me. And I'm going to jump right to it. So here we have a uh, war mount. So we are going to, so this is by Stephen Chenault, uh, edited by Finley J.E. Clayton. Uh, cover art and interior art is by Peter Brad Bradley. So brief introduction. So I'm going to go over some of these components of war mounts and, and how they're going to mechanically work within the game system. And remember, this is a preview copy, so some of these things can be changed. Um, as you can tell, <coughs> there's no table of contents yet, so that will be coming uh, sometime soon, I would assume. Um, so there's training. There's the war horse, which is probably the most commonplace of all war mounts. Um... Inexperienced riders. So, what what are the impact of an inexperienced uh, rider? Uh, animal mounts. Any animal mount, such as an elephant, elk, ram, or pony, both those found in war mounts and those who may uh, you may design yourself, must be no older than two years, in order to become a specialized war mount. The concept behind training them are the same as. The war horse refer to the above section for training guidance <coughs> so there is a um there is certainly a, a a series of things that you have to do in preparing your uh your mount to become a war mount magical beasts and the uh, there's obviously going to be differences in the training. Training magical beast is different than training animals. The creatures are often intelligent, sometimes possessing ulterior uh, purposes, are powerful, can be uh, predacious, and are typically uh, individual in the way that makes them complicated and unique to train. Untrained uh Untrained mounts at war. So how do they respond uh, in war uh, if they are not properly trained or fully trained? How do you acquire a war mount? You can rear them from young. You can purchase them. You can capture or subdue them. You can summon them. Mounts in battle, so fighting while mounted. Horse and antelope bite attacks, so something very specific to them. Overbearing. Any large mount can be used to overbear an enemy. Bloodlust. Some mounts are very aggressive and do not shy away from battle. A dragon might be fearsome to a mounted dwarf, but to the bear they're riding, the dragon is little more than a big lizard. This aggressiveness is part of the beast's disposition and killing is instinctual. 
some mounts as noted below must be restrained to keep them from charging into the fray. Knights do this naturally. All others must make successful charisma checks to restrain the beast. The rider may choose to make the strength check to physically restrain the beast. Forceful dismounting, um, so being forcefully dismounted. Feeding mounts, so there's a whole um, section on um, mounts upkeep. What occurs if you starve your mounts? Mount drag, carry, and pull. Mounts can drag dead weight equal to 10% of its weight. They can carry, um, a mount can carry weight equal to 20% of its weight, and they can pull weight that is on a wheeled vehicle equal to 150% of its weight. Cost of equipment for mounts, both standard and war mounts. And then I'm going to show you just the one so that you can see. And then I'll go through the whole list. <clears throat> so here we have an axe beak. And as you can see, it gives you the parameters for using this as a mount. So it has, uh, I'm not sure what withers is. So withers is uh, seven feet. So let's go back up to here and see. Withers, the ridge on the animal of an animal between the shoulder and the blades. All right, so I just learned something. Um, they weigh about 500 pounds. Their length is about six feet. The maximum rider height is six feet tall. The maximum rider weight is 400 pounds. They cost one gold piece to feed. Their disposition is neutral. Their size is large. Intelligent animal. Uh, they make saves on the physical and their SR is a one. Um, Talks about their abilities in combat, mounted attacks, direct attacks, dual attacks, equipment, uh, care and stabling of these creatures. And then they give the basic um, combat information for them. So an axe beak has a uh, um, three hit die, a three D8, a 14 AC. Its beak does two D4. Its uh, two kicks do one D4. Moves at 50 feet very, very fast. Uh, their armor could be either leather or padded. Calming is CL, uh, that's a challenge level of zero. So any character except the knight suffers a standard minus two while attacking while mounted. Any penalties listed in the mounted penalties are added to that. However, with a successful charisma check, the rider can calm the mount enough to reduce the standard uh, to the standard of minus two penalty by one or more, and in the cases allow them to attack in conjunction with the mount. The mule and the riding horse cannot be calmed enough to reduce the penalty. So, um, and then the mounted penalties zero for dual attack. All right. So, uh, like I said, I don't want to go and cover too much in here, but I will switch views. And go over what is actually in the um, in the book as it is right now. Uh, so I don't know if this is a complete list. First of all, there are no dragons in this, so um, that's kind of an interesting thing because I was kind of expecting that, but um, there were some in here that I was not expecting. Uh, now some are obviously going to be giant versions of them, and others, if they are normal versions of them, then they're going to require a rider that is uh, much smaller, smaller than a human. Um, so they're going to be, whether it be halflings or dwarves or gnomes or smaller creatures than that as well. So we had the axe beak, which I showed you. There's a giant bat. There's bear. There's a boar or a war boar. There's a camel. There's a large cat, like a lion, uh, a chimera, a dragoon, a dragonfly. Uh, obviously giant dragonfly, uh, a giant eagle, an eland, an elephant, an elk, a gorgon, a griffin, hellhound, hippogriff, many different types of horses. Uh, there's a skeletal horse. There is a hound. It's a warhound. 
um, can only be mounted by small statured uh, riders. A hyena, a kyrene, a giant lizard, which looks very similar to like a monitor lizard, uh, a manticore, a mule, a nightmare, an owl bear, a pegasus, a pony, a ram, a rhino, a rock, a seahorse, not like your real seahorse, it looks, you know, more fantastic looking uh, seahorse, a snake, a giant snake, obviously, uh, a spider, giant spider, a turtle, uh, which is a giant snapping turtle, a unicorn, a vulture, a warg, and a wyvern. No normal wolves or dire wolves, which I was kind of, but a, a warg is kind of a dire wolf anyway. Um, but no regular war, uh, wolves, which I was kind of surprised at. Um, now, I'm pretty sure that there's going to be more to this uh, list here. Um, but trying to figure out 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40. So 40 entries. Um, so really looking forward, <coughs> excuse me, really looking forward to see um, what's going to be added or, or if this is the, you know, the final installment of all of them. I was anticipating seeing uh, ones that were like the like the armory where they're going to have, um, you know, orcish arms and elvish arms and, and whatnot. I thought that we might see something that's more aligned with, uh, you know, creatures that typical, you know, the races would uh, typically use, you know, um, no giant badgers, you know, for gnomes or, you know, that kind of thing. Um, but again, this is a preview, so uh, I'm sure that there might be others added into this. Uh, and again, I'm a little bit surprised that there's no dragons, but uh, perhaps that's a something that's going to be included a little bit later as well. So overall, it was a you know real nice surprise to see it, uh, you know, to see it uh, hit my email and say, hey, there's a, a preview copy of this uh, for your drive-through. And uh, like I said, I didn't want to reveal uh, too much for this video, uh, you know, and for the, you know, that one stated reason. And then secondly, it is a preview copy, so I don't want to make it appear that uh, we have everything in our hands right now. Um, there's probably more to come. And, um, you know, like I said, I mean, talk about timing. I just happen to have this shirt on for the day and... Uh, and this hit my email, so really excited about that as well. Uh, it, it's looking good. It's looking like these, uh, you know, that Kickstarter should be fulfilled very, very soon. Uh, so I'm looking forward to it. And uh, I'll have to readjust my shelf space behind me to uh, make room for all of this stuff coming out of Troll Lord Games that I've backed. Uh, you know, I have those three hardcover books coming. Uh, then I also have... Um, I have basically their planes, uh, their planes book. So I have the, uh, you know, the heavens and the hells, you know, essentially. Uh, so those two books uh, coming. I have the seven books of uh, Gary Gygax's world building books uh, that are coming, um, you know, along with some adventure like the hermit is coming, uh, you know, fairly soon as well. You know, I probably have about 13 more hardcovers um, overall coming from Troll Lord Games. So it, it really is, um, uh, Troll Lord Games is going to definitely take up one of my larger shelves on the bottom. And uh, I will have to shift things around uh, for me because, uh, you know, that, that one shelf that you see directly behind me, uh, that one shelf is all of, of the shelf space I have for Castles and Crusades right now. It's definitely going to end up taking one of those bottom shelves and, and the whole length of one of the bottom shelves. So uh, so that doesn't mean that, 
Castle Sin Crusades is going to take less prominence uh, in my use or in my, uh, you know, in my showing it off, but uh, it certainly uh, just needs that much more self space. So I hope you all enjoyed this uh, preview of Castles and Crusades War Mounts. And uh, as always, uh, I wish you all a great weekend. And I look forward to seeing you on a gaming screen sometime soon or at a convention uh, even sooner. I just also got like really good news uh, for Philadelphia Era Game Expo that um, David Zeb, uh, Zeb Cook is uh, running some games and I was actually able to jump in on one of his game sessions uh, so I had to drop one that I was already looking to back, but luckily there was a waiting list for that anyway. So I'm not leaving that, uh, you know, that particular table high and dry. They had people in the waiting list anyhow, and I was able to be the first person to register for Zeb Cook's uh, Oriental Adventures game uh, session that he's running at the Philadelphia Game Expo. I have his module that he wrote along with um, along with one of my players in my own group, um, uh, who was a, a co-author of that. Uh, and so going to be really, really awesome to bring that along and, uh, to not only play in his game, but to get a signature as well. Uh, and I'll be meeting a lot of the people from, uh, Castles and Crusades or Troll Lord games there as well and playing in some of their games. So that's going to be really awesome. Uh, so... Uh, yeah, it just what a what a phenomenal year for both Troll Lord games, for Castles and Crusades specifically, and uh, and for me and gaming in general. Uh, really looking forward to now. That's January of 2025, but it's early on in January, so it's uh, you know I still consider it a part of this gaming year uh, kind of thing. So thanks for joining. Have a great weekend. And uh, as always, uh, remember to like and subscribe and to comment and to uh, hit the alert buttons and all of that stuff. Uh, let's try to get the, you know, hopefully I can get the channel up to 3,500 before my next convention in two weeks. It's very, very close. Uh, so if you are passing through and you want to keep up to date on OSR and independent uh, tabletop role playing games, this is the place for you to be at. All right. You all have a great one. Take care.